<laughs> freeze every. I got put to sleep. I got a broken face. I got stitches in my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, talk about it. I mean, while you, you know, the debut in the UFC didn't go your way, but since then, three in a row, I mean, uh, the feeling I think has got to be pretty good right now. I mean, the biggest slice of humble pie I've ever had in my life on my debut, and it shaped me into the, the person that I am now. And I think you'll all see a difference in, in character, in, in not work ethic, but there's just a different air about me and a belief. And in that fight, I can't tell you how sick that I felt. And you probably seen it towards the end. And we were talking to the corner team before I went out. And I was like, if I'm sick, what happens? And it, like, it disqualifies you so you can't be sick. So I was like, I was trying to hold back a little bit in case I was sick. But... Even on my worst day, I've given a performance like that. So I can't be too hard on myself. As far as overall, the thoughts of being with a pretty thorough domination this evening. Uh, how did you feel about, you know, she gave you a test here and there, but overall it's dominant. What, what did you feel about it? Um, I'm proud of myself to have been finished in my first fight by shit decision making and lack of jujitsu knowledge to the last three fights I've shown every single person. A different submission attack, a different takedown, not just the same. Um, that is evolution and that's what MMA is and I can only keep evolving and um, and I'm just trying to be the best me and my coaching staff, my training partners are really, really, really bringing out the best me and we're starting to, to understand that when I used to fight, it was a fight and now a game plan, I listen and I stick to the game plan and this is the big difference that I've learned. Um, when I was tired then, I went a little bit back to old me um, but even in old me, I still got the takedown. And then I could have just rid out two rounds on top and just little elbow here, move, here, there, move. Um, and, I, and I tried to still give you guys a finish. So <clears throat> it's all surreal. I'm, I'm sitting here in Boston, Massachusetts. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Whoa. Speaking of finish, I'm sorry. Speaking of finish, in the second round, she got deducted a point for holding the fence. When she was holding the fence, I called you it. had that arm triangle in. Mm -hmm. Was she saved from the finish? Right, holding that fence? I, uh, I'm telling you, it was on. It was on. And then when we went back, um, she was trying to like not give me it back in the same position. I was like, I don't think so. Um, we was told straight away in the changing rooms, toes in the fence, fingers in the fence, a point taken away, and I'll put you back against the fence. So that's why I think his name's Brian or Ryan. Forgive me if I'm wrong, the referee. I said, whoa. And he went, no, yeah, one, one point, one point, one point. So I've I've done what we've worked on and I've got I've got pictures, I've got video evidence of when a jab's been thrown, try and catch the head and arm, take down. Um, even this week, I think I threw at Thai coach Sai um, with that same thing. So um, it's a product of, of all our hard work and... Um, when I watch it back, I'll be proud of it, I'm sure. You, you talked this week about being calm. How did you feel in the cage? Did you feel the same way? Yeah, I feel even when I got... I didn't get taken down, but I went for the back and finished on bottom. I scrambled up. Um, no bother. I, I wasn't really in danger. And even when I'm going low with my head, people can say, oh, that head movement, but I'm still not getting clipped. Like, you can say what you want. I still wasn't getting hit. Um, I knew when a knee was coming. I knew when a kick was coming. I probably took one one jab um, really hard to the face. And I think I took a knee or a push kick. Um, I don't really remember getting hit too much other than that. Uh, I'll probably watch it back. I've been clipped left, right and centre. But um, I feel safe. I, that's the, I really connected with the crowd when I came out then. like I sang to them, they sang back to me and what a crowd it was. It, I just really wish that I got the finish for them, but I, I felt like the crowd get into it when, when the finish was nearly on and we got back up and we was given it. You, Everyone could see we were both fucked. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're both going and going and going. And You've seen me at UFC, Liverpool, uh, UFC London. One eye, adrenaline's up. I'm still coming. So you can see something wasn't right in that performance, but still nearly squeezed the finish out. I'm, I'm getting like 99% of just... I need to find this 0.01%. When I find it, I've got it then. Vodka, cranberry, post fight, that was the idea? I'm not going to be able to. No? <laughs> Later um, this week, I guess. Do you know what? I'm probably going to go home, be sick, and then start drinking again, knowing me. But um, <laughs> it's who I am, isn't it? Really? it Sorry. 
Go on, sorry. I'm sorry to be interrupting. Three wins in a row. Um, when do you decide to get some high ranked opponents? When I'm giving them. Um, you think you deserve them? Three wins proves that I'm at, at a level. Um, just a bit disappointed I didn't get a finish because then I wasn't really solidified and being like, do you know what? I won top 10 now. Um, but I, I, I'm definitely due a top 15. I'm definitely due a top 10. I think I deserve to be ranked now. Um, you've got people who've only won one fight in, in flyweight ranked. ranked. So I, I, I don't quite know how that happens. But um, let's have a go next year. I know UFC London's always in March. Um, Turnaround time, I think that's absolutely perfect for me. And I think I can really bring something and keep the momentum going in Europe. Whoever. Whoever. You also became the second UFC fighter, a female fighter, with Angela Hill to have uh, three consecutive fights with 100 plus significant strikes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you were aware of that, but what was that record? Which I believe you won at five straight, but you had a five round fights there. So yeah. What, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Um, that shows that I've got a gas tank. That shows that the hours of pads and training that I do with my coaches proves that we're accurate with what we're throwing. I might not hit like a truck, but I've got an engine and I'll break it down and I land and I'm accurate. So I'm actually really another face for someone from in a female from England. So I'm really happy with that, mate. Thank you for the statistic. You got any more? Can I have any more? I got a feeling that since your loss. You haven't missed wrestling or jiu-jitsu training, am I right? Uh, pretty much, pretty much. I've oh, sorry. Okay. I've, um, the loss changed my life and I had to totally embrace jiu-jitsu. And it's really hard coming from a place where in boxing I could walk into any gym and I could, I could stand with any man and be like, let's go. In jiu-jitsu, I am telling you now, our gym is one of the best in the world. I swear to God. And when you walk on that mat, when you're so-so, it's like humble pie, humble pie, humble pie, humble pie. And yeah, we've got a new wrestling coach in the gym. One of my coaches, Ellis, really, really good wrestling coaches. And their styles really suit me. And you can just see now I'm so comfortable and not afraid to just go, let's have it. Um, that... What, what would you say 60% of my training is grappling now when it's 40 is, is offensive grappling and jiu-jitsu. I don't, it used to be, oh, don't get taken down, like sprawl and brawl. And now I'm a mixed martial artist. So I, I promised Rimmer, my coach, before I went out, I was like, I will go and be a, a member of Next Generation by getting you a submission win now. Um, fucking didn't get it again, <laughs> but I really tried. I really tried. Thank you, mate. Uh, a little trash talk beforehand. Are you someone who needs that to try to get in your opponent's head? Say trash talk. I think I've respected it. I didn't downplay it the whole camp. When we arrived at the hotel, I shook a hand and said, have a great week, enjoy it. And then at the stay down, I'm a scouser. We fight. We get in your head. Um, I just said to her, you just need to know, like, this is a level up and are you ready? Are you sure you're supposed to be here? Um, with a performance like that, I think she is. But she's, she still wasn't on my level on my worst day. So um, I like to paint a big story. I like to get everyone involved. And it's showmanship as well as just fighting and proving and showing my skill set. I've got to get everyone pumped and amped. So um, I'll always bring a bit of, like, scouse anger with me. Scouse anger. I'm going to need to watch it back. I'm going to need to watch it back. But the it, winning's a habit and it's a mentality. So it's a win for me. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. It's my first one. Yay! <laughs>